Hello everyone, it is me, Samuel here with the Samuel Brock Flynn Show. We have a special guest. His name is Robbie Wells. He is a presidential candidate. Welcome to the show. Samuel, it's great to be here and be able to speak uh, with all of your audience today. What an honor. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for being on the podcast today as well. I sure do appreciate it. And uh, how, how's everything going with the uh, presidential stuff, that the candidate stuff that, that you have going? Well, you know, we're running as an independent, so we, we do fight an uphill battle getting our message out there. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you, we've done some really, really cool things. Um, we're, we're going viral on several of our videos uh, on social media through TikTok mainly. But um, we put a, a video out just this past weekend. And um, in 36 hours, it was over a million and a half views. So there's a lot of people that are taking note of what we're saying. I think a lot of people are, are afraid of what's going on in our country right now. And they're afraid with the future direction of our country, if it's going to rely on uh, the, the, the nominee of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. And you've got to ask yourself, Samuel, is that really, is that really the best that America has to offer? I don't believe it is. And that's why I've taken this strong stand to run for president of the United States. Now, now, what is your plans to change of the future for America? If you can, include... well, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that we need to do, Samuel. Um, one of my opponents has always said, "Make America great again." Now, we've done some great things. We've gone to the moon. Uh, we've come up with cures for for diseases. Uh, we've done some really good things. We won the the Revolutionary War over the greatest military on the face of the planet with just a bunch of farmers that did that. So we've done some great things. But I venture to say, have we really been great as a nation for everyone at any one given time? Have we ever been great uh, for the Native Americans that were forced off of their land and onto the Trail of Tears? Have we ever been great for... Uh, the Africans that were kidnapped and brought here and sold into slavery. Has it been great for African Americans today where African American males are still afraid to walk down the streets of a city in fear of retribution from, from uh, police officers? So I venture to say that America, my country, the country that I love, will achieve true greatness for the first time once the lines of separation that have divided our people are completely erased. And that's exactly what I intend on doing. We need to come together, unify as a nation, walk together hand in hand, side by side, laying aside our differences, staring down the fear of our differences with the face of courage. Uh, now, how do you feel about our current country's current state now? Do you think it's in a good, great state, or do you think it needs a lot of help? Well, I believe we, we need a lot of help. you got to look at what's going on right now and compare it to just eight years ago. If you just look back over the past eight years, and uh, we've been through a pandemic where we lost over a million people here in the United States. Uh, now you've got two major wars going on that we are, that we are funding, uh, proxy wars, and, and that's something that would change under my leadership, okay? We're, we're, we're currently giving away over $200 billion a year in foreign military aid, yet we've got 350,000 homeless people in the United States, and our young people can't afford to go to college because it's so expensive. We've got to start changing our priorities and putting the priorities of, of our people first. We've got to take care of our own backyard before we worry about anyone else's backyard or one day we're going to wake up and we're not going to have a backyard. Um, we continue to go deeper and deeper in debt. Right. Uh, the price of the prices of, of, of gas and of, of food continues to rise. So are we in a great state right now? No, we're not. We're not in a great state right now, but you need strong leadership, no nonsense, common sense leadership. 
mm-hmm. and that's what you're going to get from me. Someone that's going to put nation over party. Right. Someone that's going to put the people over these huge corporations and special interest groups. You see, all these all these people that are in Washington working right now, they, they, they really don't answer to the people. They answer to special interest groups. Well, let me say this, and, and I must admit, uh, Samuel, I do have one special interest group that I represent. My special interest group is 350 million Americans. My special yeah. interest group includes you. Wow. Thank you. So, um, what what do you guys plan to do about, like, the job market goes and the, and the job industry? Um, as you, as I told you yesterday, before even this interview, it was hard for me to even get a job, and that's that's a concern for me, especially when you have the White House saying the guy created millions and thousands of jobs when I know that's not even true because it took me <laughs> actually a good long time to find a job. It took me a couple months, and that to me that says that something's going on right there at the red red flag to me so well you're, you're you're exactly right samuel we have a job deficit we we, we do not have a job surplus in america right. um, and and it's not going to get any better which is why we've got to go to my plan and let me explain okay and i i, I do advocate for a universal basic income and a lot of people say well, we can't afford it we can't afford not to do it and here's why um uh, Within 15 years, 75% of our jobs that are there right now will be gone. They will be taken over, and those jobs will be run by robots and AI. And for those of you that think I'm crazy, all you have to do is go on YouTube right now, okay? And you look up all the different ways that robots are being used and AI is being used. You go down to Texas right now in Houston, there are McDonald's restaurants that are 100% robotic. Now, if McDonald's, which leads in fast food, and they have for for decades, but if they are going to 100% robotic restaurants, how long is it going to be before everybody else in the service industry does the same thing? Exactly. uh, The private sector the private sector is going to continue um, through capitalism to try to make as much of a profit as they can. That means the jobs are going to go away. Now, if that happens, you're going to need a universal basic income. Now, there's still going to be some jobs, but but if we have a universal basic income, then you won't have massive unemployment like you, this country's never seen. We think back to the Great Depression, and, and I know that, that most of us were not even born then, but we've read about it in the history books. If we don't get ahead of this curve with AI and with the robotics and what's getting ready to happen, it is going to be a massive, massive uh, implosion of not only our economy, okay, but of our society. Right. So we've got to look at this as a serious alternative in a serious direction that we need to move as a nation. Right. Now, how do you feel that these companies are possibly influencing, um, being influenced by our current administration? Um, I read somewhere that Biden had said something they're going to make the Trump supporters pay and they're going to lose their uh, jobs and because they're jobless, they're going to make their, you know, their, you, you see what I'm, what direction I'm going to. It, there's a lot of well, Americans just, I've it, talked to that feel the same way here. Rhetoric. It's hateful rhetoric and it's nothing more than Hollywood theatrics that uh, Democrats and Republicans, uh, especially those in leadership, go back and forth with each other to keep things stirred up. But the fact of the matter is that is there's only about five to ten people uh, in this country, and they're the establishment, and they actually control both of these parties. So really, it looks like we have a two-party system, but really it's just one. Oh. Um, but, but you get what I'm 
you get what I'm saying. I I'm absolutely sure. get what you're saying, but I do not believe it is, it is our, our current administration that is trying to influence uh, anything else. In fact, it's the big corporations now that are influencing our administration. It's just the opposite. That's got to change. Hmm. Now, how, how do you feel about companies making, um, because I've literally had this said to me before, how do you feel about these companies having their own uh, laws? And, you know, instead of policies, they call them laws. Well, I, I thought they were to adhere to the UN, United States Constitution, especially since they're operating in our country. But apparently these companies can create laws now. Um, you know, I've even heard of that. Now, I, I do not feel uh, comfortable knowing that we have a that we have companies out there that do that sort of that's trying to do that sort of thing. Well, and, and it's so sad that we live in in a day where the huge corporations with all the money can set the agenda what they, they want to see happen, which benefits who? It benefits those companies. It does not benefit the people of the United States. That, that's why I'm actually running as an independent because I am putting nation over party. I'm putting people over the Democrats and the Republicans. And, and it's time that like-minded individuals like myself stand up and rise up. We need a band of people across this country that will come together and start running for literally every office out there. And we need to get the word out. And we need to let everybody know that it's time for this silent majority, because there is a silent majority here that there are good, just hardworking, blue collar people. And I'm talking about middle class America. You see, uh, those of us politically that sit right here in the middle, whether you're a middle-of-the-road Democrat, middle-of-the-road Republican, or a middle-of-the-road Independent, there's not that much difference between any of us. But the ones that get all the attention on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, they're the ones that are on the fringes on the far left and the far right because they cry the loudest and they, they, they scream and they holler, including like this whole trans uh, gender uh, agenda that you see right now. And and you see some things going on and they're getting in front of the microphones and the, and the television cameras because the cameras want to cover that because it improves their ratings. It's almost like shock TV. Well, right. it's time for the silent majority, which is truly the majority of this country to stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. And it's time for us to get back to being the greatest country on the face of this planet. We all seem to think that we are right now. But right. there's a lot of countries that are way ahead of us. We rank 36 in the world in education right now. 36. Now, I was an educator for, for 20 years. That, I know the problems with education. I know how to fix the problems in education. Okay? We've right. got to get back to letting our, our educators teach the curriculum instead of having these agendas push down these children's throats. Right. So that's that's one thing that I'm looking at. I, I'm all about protecting uh, the future of our nation. And you've got to ask yourself, Samuel, what is the greatest asset? The greatest asset of our country. I truly believe it's our people. It and is. the greatest asset of our people is our young people because they are going to be the future. The future leaders, the future teachers, the doctors, the, the inventors, whatever the case may be. So we've got to protect them. I do have a plan that will protect every child in every school across this country from the gun violence by eliminating gun violence in schools. We can do that and at the same time protect the Second Amendment. How are we going to do that? We're going to, cre we're going to create over half a million jobs for our unemployed veterans. We're going to screen them. We're going to train them. We're going to get the right ones back in place as guardians for our children in every school across this country. But no longer are our children, under my leadership, going to have to look over their shoulders in fear of bullets flying while they're taking a test in school. Right. 
that's going to happen. I've also got a plan that will. Can, can I make college can I bring, education? Can I bring in my moderator? Free. Go ahead. Can I bring in my moderator and and if because I think he might have a few questions. Sure. M okay. Mr. Nash, do you have any questions? Mr. Nash. I don't know if he's with us, Samuel. Oh. Well, I don't know either. He might he might be, I don't know. But um it, he probably don't have any questions. Sometimes he'll uh, text me and and so that's why I was wondering about that, so but um no worries. But uh anyhow, I uh I think we should um you know we need somebody that that knows how to run this better this country better than uh, than who we have currently in office now. Does that make sense? So well, let me let me say this. Okay, if you look over the past two presidents that we've had, okay, the, the, the one we had just before this one. I mean, while he was president, we had over a million people that died from a coronavirus, and that's because he. He tried to ignore it for too long, and then uh, when he did get a hold of it, he, he didn't know what to do to, to try to combat it. And now you've got a current president that thinks it's 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 okay uh, to to outsource two wars and, and, and give all our money away uh, to foreign military aid. Yet we've got all these people, especially on the West Coast, that are living on the streets. In the United States, let's think about that for a minute. Okay, if we want to talk about being the greatest country on the face of this planet, why do we have homeless people? Why do we rank 36 in the world in education? Why is college education and health care not free? We're the only Western industrialized nation that does not have free health care and free college tuition. But yet we still have Republicans that want to say we're the greatest nation on the face of the planet. We've got... We've got minorities that are still afraid uh, of, of retribution from the police department. Yet we want to call ourselves the greatest. We've got a lot of things that we've got to improve on. A lot of things. But I truly believe that we the reason that we're in the, in the predicament we are right now is because we kept on doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, Samuel, if you keep on doing the same thing, you keep on getting the same result. And if you want a different result, you have to do something different. It's time to stop electing people that are beholden to all these big corporations. It's time to start electing independence. That's where I come in. Well, I I, um, I myself at one time uh, voted for independence. I will say that much. And then I seen some things about, um, uh, you know, about the... Clinton and, and Trump and I was like I was like well honestly I'd rather vote for Trump because not only that he's a businessman he's a he, he's known for business really than he is a politician he's very much known in that and that's probably why a lot of people don't understand him because or or probably have their worries about him because he's a he's more of a businessman than stop you for a second just ask you this question if you were an employer and you had to hire someone to uh be your general manager let's say of a restaurant or, or whatever um and you're you're starting to interview people for that position are you going to hire somebody that's got a felony or, or that's on facing felony charges the, the answer to that probably is no you won't yet we've got a Republican nominee for president that's been the president before that's facing 91 felony charges. 91, not 90, not 89, 91. But then on the other side, you've got a, a current president that has, he's having trouble mentally keeping up with what's going on. He, he stumbles, he falls, he does all this. So I ask myself sometimes, am I running against Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Or am I running against John Gotti and the Fall Guy? Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, I, I like I said, he, he's more known as a businessman, and 
I get what you're saying too. You're saying somebody more more qualified to be able to do both, I guess, essentially is what you're saying and that's able to do stuff instead of actually doing a bunch of, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying, but um, wasn't Mr. Trump, though, found acquitted, though, on a cup uh, more than once? Well, no, no, like like on the felony charges, he he still got to go and face those those. Now, now what what happened was there was some judges that said uh, that he's still going to be on the ballot. Okay, so he is going to be on the ballot in all these states. That's fine. That's good. But I just believe that America needs to start looking at what's going on and saying, you know what, is that really? Is that really? the best that we can do as a country. You see, uh, there, there's some things about Donald Trump that I do like. There's some things about Joe Biden that I like. Okay, but but I'm, I'm looking at, at, at the things that, that, in my humble opinion, would disqualify them. Okay? Um, I'm a no-nonsense type guy. Uh, an old college football coach. Uh, I do promote world peace. And I am an ambassador to the International Human Rights Peace Commission. I've gone all around the world speaking about world peace and my plan to actually push forward towards that. Um, I believe that, that adversaries can become allies when they find common goals that they can work towards. Uh, improving our environment, uh, eliminating uh, the coronavirus and creating a a global biodefense infrastructure, and we've got the, we've got the technology to do it. But if we we can do that, this is something that adversaries can actually come together. And if we can do that, then those adversaries now become allies. Nobody wants to see uh, of this world destroyed. So therefore, that's another thing that we as a people. Uh, and I say people, humankind, we can all come together and we can work on. So that's something that I'm working on, eliminating homelessness, uh, eliminating hunger, uh, making college education free, uh, health care free, human rights, basic, basic human rights for each and every one of us. But, you know, here in the United States, do you know what your, actual, your, your birthright is right now, Samuel? Do you have any idea what you are born into and what you take on? As an American citizen, I'll tell you, the average American citizen in their lifetime has to pay over $1 million in taxes. And most of that money goes to pay debt that we owe to countries such as China. Now, ask yourself, did you ask for that? Did you sign for any of that debt? Think about the 30-some-odd trillion that we are in debt right now. Did anybody listening to your, uh, your program right now, did anybody sign for that debt? Of course not. Okay? So we the people, we're not in debt. It's these lawmakers that actually signed this. They're the ones that are in debt. They're the ones that put their John Hancock on it. So with that being said, if our country is really that far in debt, imagine if you were that far in debt. Imagine if you were just $100,000 in debt in your bank account, you were upside down that much. Would you be considered bankrupt? Uh, very it's going much. It's to come to a, go ahead. Very much so, yes, that is. Yeah, well, well, and, and what's going to happen if we don't change, okay? If we don't change, our economy and our society is going to collapse completely, okay? Now, the new system that I'm talking about is a system that we will be in 25 to 30 years from now. The question is, are we going to go ahead and go to it now, or are we going to wait until the society and the economy completely collapses, and then we have to go to it? All right. Um, yeah, that's... Uh... That's, that's not good. And two, I've been hearing uh, all over Twitter that our, our banking system is getting ready to possibly collapse. I did hear about that. So, well, yeah, we're, we're, 
our, our banking system has been catering on the verge of collapse for, for decades now. Yeah. And a lot of it is the system that we're in that, that's been built on greed. Now, a lot of people say, well, that sounds very socialist to me. Well, you got to ask yourself, okay, is, is some of those tools bad or is it not so bad? And here's what I mean by that. We have social security, correct? Yes. Well, if we've got social security and everybody has kind of gotten on board with that, why is it so bad? You know, Republicans don't want to hand out any money to anybody. But I tell you what, whenever there's there's uh, uh, federal aid that goes out, they never turn it down. Those Republicans never turn it down. Well, you know, we, we've but got on the a... flip side, on the flip side, let me say this. Okay. All right. The, the Democrats, okay, especially with the LGBTQ, and let, let me just put a disclaimer out there real quick. I love all people. I truly, truly do love all people. But with some of this mess, enough is enough. Yes, sir. And if I'm president, if I'm president, okay, and I put my plan in that's for kids that will protect children in every school from the gun violence, we're going to protect them from this crazy agenda that's being pushed down their throats, too, right now. This trans agenda, that's going to go away. I'm just telling you straight up right now. That's a bunch of bullshit. It is. Okay? And I may I may get in trouble for using language, but you know what? The fact of the matter is, it is. Right. Um, but, it, you, know, you know, I will vote for you as long as our... Freedom of speech is not taken away, and our Second Amendment is not uh, taken away or uh, infringed upon, in other words. You know, there's a reason well, why our founder fathers put that's those right. there. So, that's exactly right. But we've got to get back to the Bill of Rights. We've got to get back to the Constitution. We've got to get back to the Declaration of Independence. Yes, Think sir. About it. The yes, sir. Declaration of Independence so that we can be independently free from all the tyranny that's out there. Now, think about this, the tyranny that we face right now because the corporations have such a stronghold on our government, okay? It's time for we, the people, to rise up. Right. I, I, I agree that we need to get tyranny out of here and, and completely eliminate it. So... I agree very much, and it it's, uh, should be a done thing for, you know, uh, for, for companies trying to make laws out here that don't even have a legislative or a, a, a executive branch of the government, you know, they don't, they don't even have all of that kind of power, and they need to quit trying to make their own laws and all of that. They can forget that. That's out the window, especially if they don't well, have any legitimate power in this Samuel. Country. Samuel, if I can say this too, um, you know, in, in our great country, you can run for more than one office at a time, and I'm actually running for a, a separate office, which is the Virginia uh, 6th District. I'm running for U.S. Congress as well. And the reason I'm doing that uh, is to actually give, once again, give the people in this, in this district someone that's going to represent them instead of someone that's just going to be beholden to a party and just get along and, and, and vote party line, which is what's been going on, not only in the 6th District, but everywhere else around this country. Now, if you look at Congress right now, there are no independents there. They're either Democrat or they're Republican. And usually on, on, on the big votes, it's about a 50-50 split. But if I go to Congress as an independent, then my vote will be the swing vote that not only represents my district, but can shape the trajectory that our country takes over the next few years. So, yes, I'm I've only got for 20, I've only got 20 but seconds I'm also left. running for, for, this, for, for con Congress here in, in the 6th District. All right. I, I only have 20 seconds left, so you guys know. So I appreciate you for being on the show. Thank you so much, Robbie. And uh, I hope to catch up and keep in contact with you as well. So thanks for being on the show. And thank you guys for listening out there on the Samuel Brock Clinton Show.